Back again, everyone. This is Computer Science 0478, uh, also for uh, uh, 2210. Uh, and we we'll continue here the solution of the pre release material pseudocode solution of uh, paper uh, May June uh, 21, paper 2 variant 1. In the previous series of videos, we explained the uh, points of task 1 uh, here related to uh, this point, point number 1, point number 2. And in this session, we'll continue point number three and point number four. Uh, uh, in this uh, session, we will allow the tutor to enter the number of candidates in the election. And you have to take care of here about maximum number of candidates should be uh, four, should not exceed, uh, exceed four candidates. Uh, so here you must uh, validate the input and make sure that it does not exceed the four candidates. Also, in this session, we will uh, do this point, allow the tutor to enter the names of the candidates and store them in a suitable data structure. So at the beginning, you should uh, decide, you should select here or the tutor will input whether you have one candidate, two candidates, three and maximum of four. And in the next point, you will need to input the names depending on how many of them. If you have two uh, candidates, so uh, uh, you, your program should be able to receive or to ask the, the tutor to input two names. If you selected three uh, candidates, then uh, the program should ask the tutor to input three names and so on. Okay, let's start here by this point, number three. So allow the tutor to input the number of candidates in the election, maximum of four candidates. How to do this? At the beginning, as I told you, you should prompt the user. Prompting here, we are prompting, meaning that you should show a message, appropriate message here to the user that to enter the number of candidates in the election and also to notify him, notify him that uh, maximum of four candidates. And then after prompting the user by the keyword print okay as you can see here between double quotes here okay input input keyword is used to input the uh, uh, the data and here we have a variable that uh, I give the name here as number of group candidate uh, so this is a variable that you need to declare uh, before doing this okay so that it can receive the number of candidates here you should validate as this is one of the uh, important things for your solution. How to validate the user input. Okay, if number of candidates, so the, the user here, the tutor will here might input one, might input two, might input three, might input four. Okay, in case that he did this, things will go fine. Otherwise, if he, for example, inputs five, okay. So we have to validate the input here by if condition, if number of uh, group candidate, this variable, what uh, it has okay it's less than one if it's less than one or the number of group candidates is greater than four okay that means this is invalid input so then print invalid number of candidates and try again so this is validation that uh, uh, the question a question might ask you how you validate the number of uh, uh, candidates so you can you can use this if condition as an answer also, we have here, uh, I, I made a loop here, until, so this will keep repeating until uh, the number of candidates is greater than uh, one and number of candidates is less than four, okay? So, I repeat until this is greater than one and number of candidates is uh, less than equal to four. Otherwise, okay, so uh, what will happen here in this loop? In case that you input uh, any other values rather than one or two or three or four, this loop will be uh, repeated until number of candidates is between these values. Okay, so for example, if you input seven, this is an error and it should uh, try. You should try again. Okay, so the the loop will be repeated again until you input one of these uh, valid values: one, two, four. Okay, this is for point number three. Now, also, do not forget to declare this variable. This is 
the, uh, the, the variable that you are going to use and the data type, okay? And what's the purpose of this variable? Is to store the number of candidates and tutor group maximum of four. Now let's uh, continue and the uh, point number four, which is uh, allow the tutor to enter the, the names of the candidates and store them in a suitable suitable data structure. So you should have a suitable data structure here to store uh, the names of the candidates. Okay, so I made a for loop here. This for loop uh, is going to count from one to the number of candidates. Do you remember this variable? This is the variable that you have used previously. So for example, if you uh, decided to have three candidates, so this is going to loop from one to three. If you decided to have two candidates, so this is going to loop from one to two. Okay, so this is going to be a variable according to the number of inputs. Okay, it's not going to be fixed, fixed uh, uh, constant. Okay, so after this, also prompting is very important here. Print, enter the name of the candidates of the tutor group of, then tutor group name. For example, at the beginning, if he, uh, if the tutor selected the name for this group as, for example, 8B, so this will, this message will be enter the name of the candidate of tutor group of 8B, 8C, 9B, whatever the group name that you have selected at the beginning, and then also here input uh, can name candidate name. This is a variable name for the candidate candidate name, and then you will take this. For example, he inputs. Uh, this name as a candidate so this will be stored in the candidate name okay and this variable later on will be stored in this array the array is all candidate uh, candidates array and here you have the index of the array which is the same as the uh, for loop okay so here we when we are looping through the uh, first candidate number one the value here will be one if we loop through the uh, value of two so the count here will be two. If we are looping through uh, three, then this value will be three. And what will happen? Okay, so, so let's say that we have a candidate of uh, four, uh, uh, an array of uh, four candidates. The first one has the index of one, index of two, index of three, index of four. Okay, so in the first loop, this will be the candidate name will be stored here. Okay, and so on until you uh, store all the candidates in your array. What's the name of this array? All candidates array, which is storing only the names of the candidates. Okay, uh, that's all for this part till now. Uh, task of task one, point number three and point number four. Next time we'll continue point number five and point number six till we meet again. Wishing you all the best.